Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have the final part of our villa tour here in the Gulf. I'm so sad it's come to an end, but we've got a very exciting video for you. Right now I'm standing in a corridor that connects the main residence to the external Majlis wing. This area is all about entertaining guests separately from the house. So we have its own separate washroom, probably the most glamorous bathroom I've ever designed, a guest bedroom, and the external majlis is at the end of the corridor. At the end of this video, I'll also be taking you across the pool to the gym building, but let's get started here. The external majlis is the most colorful room we've ever designed. Come on in. Before we start the tour of the Majlis, I would just like to say thank you to UFO3 by Foreo Sweden for sponsoring today's video. Those of you who have watched this channel regularly may have seen me talking about this device before. It is a deep facial hydration device. I use it on a regular basis and I find it really helps my skin feel very supple, moisturized, and my, my makeup goes on it much better as well particularly when I was traveling back and forth, I found with all the air conditioning, the flights and the heat, I could really see my skin suffering. So what I did was, especially on the days I was filming, I used the UFO3, in case you haven't seen it, this is what it is, it's really small, so easy to pack into your bag or hand luggage, and you unclip the front, and then you can take one of their sheet masks, they've got lots of different types that you can order, my personal favorite is the Make My Day sheet mask. Quite small, but you don't need a big sheet mask that goes all over your face because it goes onto the UFO3, clips in, and the UFO3 has lots of different settings with different LED light colors, different temperatures, and it's clinically proven to increase the moisture and the hydration of your skin. It has the blue LED light and it's also the cryotherapy setting, so it's really cool. And I find that really helps depuff my skin um, and it sort of reduces the appearance of pores as well. So you literally just massage that onto your face all over for 90 seconds. I mean, who hasn't got the time for 90 seconds? Then when it's finished, you literally unclip it, throw the mask in the bin and you can wipe it with a wet cloth. And the last thing I like to do is get the rest of the packet. There's always some um, product still left in there. So I literally scoop that out, put the rest of it on my skin. And I've seen a really big difference in the quality of my skin, how moisturized it feels. Um, it looks much better on camera, which is always a good thing. So if you are interested to try it for yourself, right now is a good time because it's very, very discounted. But if you use the link in the description box, there's 30% off for everyone. And for the first 50 viewers of this channel that click on that link and order it, if you use my discount code Patterson, you can get another 10% off. So if you do try it and you love it as much as I do, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. And think, thank you to UFO3 by Foreo Sweden for sponsoring today's video. Now we'll go back to the Majlis. We are now in the external majlis. You guys have already seen the formal majlis in the main house. This one is in a separate adjacent wing as you've just seen. And the purpose of this room is more for the male members of the household to entertain friends separately from the family. This is probably the most colorful room we've ever designed. And I'd like to dedicate this part of the video to all those people out there that have said we can't do color, clearly we can. The colour scheme was very much led by the Feng Shui experts, as with all the interiors in this project. In this room, they wanted elements of fire and the colour palette needed to be terracotta red, peach and gold, and I think beige as well. Quite an unusual colour scheme and it took me a few hours when I was putting all the fabrics and the colours together to really get my head around it. But when I found a few key pieces of furniture and fabrics and the rug, it all started to come together and actually I really love the end result. It's not a normal colour combination and I love the challenge of putting together something that I would have never done before. Also, it makes perfect sense in here and this is something I've found a lot with Feng Shui is that a lot of their rules are quite 
sensible. In this room at dusk, you get the most beautiful sunset across these windows. And so the whole room is bathed with this golden light and all these colors inside really emphasize that. The most important thing to know when designing a majlis is that it's all about maximizing seating and all the seating has to be around the perimeter of the room. No one should have their back to anyone else when they're sat in the room and socializing. We have divided this room into two separate seating areas, which is something that we tend to do with majlises quite a lot because generally they're very long, narrow rooms. Normally they're no more than three meters wide, which allows for easy conversation when someone's sat on one side of the room to the other. But in here it's slightly deeper. And the reason why we've divided this space into two is not only for aesthetic reasons, because it would have felt quite sort of long and empty and we wanted to zone each space, but also because this room is multi-purpose. So when you're down this end of the room, this end of the room would be used when it's a large gathering. This is slightly more formal, typical, traditional Magellan seating. Generally the seating that they use is quite shallow, it's not about sort of slumping and lounging on a sofa, it's much more about being propped upright. You'll sit here, drink coffee and tea. But then if we slide down to this end, what's quite unusual about this majlis and different from the formal majlis that we saw inside the house is that we actually have a TV in here. And the reason why we did that is that the client was very keen to double up this space as a TV area as well as a majlis. So you can see here, we've opted for much deeper sofas. These are more sort of normal TV room sofas so that the clients can lounge here, watch a movie, sit and chat with their friends. It's a slightly less formal sitting area, but if they're having a big gathering, it unites as one big space. One of my favourite things about working on projects overseas and certainly in this region is learning about the culture and the local etiquette. Our clients taught us so much about this while we've been working with them. And in the Majlis there is a very specific etiquette with your coffee cup. You should never actually put your coffee cup down. If you do put it down, what it means is that you're wanting to talk, you want the attention of the whole room so everyone will stop talking and look at you so that you can talk about what it is that you want to talk about. If you're finished your coffee, you should shake it like this and then your coffee cup will be taken away. The other thing that we have learned about majlises is that there's an etiquette to who sits where. So the most senior member of the gathering or the eldest member of the gathering will have the prime position, which is a central location opposite the door, which happens to be where I'm sat right now. And then everyone else will kind of follow around the room and you should always be waited to be seated by your host. You don't just sit down yourself. Another tip that I wanted to share with you when you're planning your fabrics for your interior is to think about what angle you're going to see the pieces from. So this is a great example of how important it is to consider the back of a chair. As you walk into the majlis, the first thing you see is the back and side of this armchair. And so we wanted to pick a really statement fabric. This is a beautiful weave that's got lots of squares and circles in, and it really draws you into the room. And then in between the two fabrics, we've done this special trim so it feels really elevated. And then over here at the curtains, this is one of my favorite trims we've ever used. It almost looks like peacock feathers. And we've managed to introduce the other colors that the Feng Shui experts wanted with this beautiful peach fabric and the lovely gold trim. It kind of marries it in. You can see next to this resin panel, it just tones perfectly. I wanted to talk a little bit about the fabrics and the colour scheme. Obviously this is a much bolder colour scheme than you'll normally see from us. And so we want to be really careful with where we positioned each of the most colourful pieces of upholstery in the room. It's quite a long narrow room, so I decided to put the two strongest colour pieces of upholstery, which is this sort of terracotta velvet sofa that I'm sat on, and the terracotta the terracotta, that's a tongue twister, armchairs at the other side. And what that does is it kind of brings the room in and makes it feel less long and narrow. All the fabrics are performance fabrics, even this very luxurious velvet. We wanted to make sure that our clients could relax in here and eat and drink without worrying about things getting ruined. We've used lots of colors and patterns all on the cushions. And this is our way of sort of uniting those two color schemes with the light off-white and the terracotta. We've also got some gold elements that we needed to introduce with the Feng Shui brief. 
And when I'm mixing different colours, I like to try and find a fabric that unites those two main colours in the room. So here we've got this Ikat fabric, which has a sort of terracotta tan colour and the cream and it kind of unites them and marries them together. The lighting in this room definitely deserves a special mention. With the lighting, we really wanted to emphasise the warmth and the cosiness of this room. So we've layered up lots of different levels of light. Starting in the corners, we've got lots of table lamps. I love this terracotta shade. Then we've done really statement chandeliers above each coffee table, some beautiful glistening wall lights, LED strips in the joinery, and an LED strip in the coffee ceiling around the perimeter of the room. We designed all the joinery as with all of our projects. The difference with working overseas is that we tend to work with local joinery firms to manufacture all of our designs. On this particular one, we sourced these resin panels from Gabson & Watt in London. They were then flown out here and manufactured into doors. The local joiner matched all of our samples to get the perfect colour of oak that we wanted and antique brass. And then this unit houses not only the TV, but allows for some additional storage, some open shelving. And then on this side over here, we've got a little mini kitchenette area. So if the client wants to sort of serve drinks in here, they don't have to have people go all the way to the kitchen. They've got everything behind here. I'm so happy with how the external majlis has turned out. It feels warm and cozy and invigorating all at the same time. It's the perfect ambiance that you'd want for a majlis. But now I'm gonna take you down the corridor to the guest bedroom that is also in this wing. So let's head there now. Down the corridor from the external majlis, we have the guest bedroom. In houses across the Middle East, guest bedrooms tend to be located separately from the family bedrooms and on the ground floor. And I think that's a really nice idea because it gives not only your guests, but also your family, a little bit of separation and privacy. For the color scheme, the Feng Shui experts gave us a choice. We could either do red, yellow or beige. So as you can see, we went for beige because we do love a neutral. And the starting point for the colour scheme in here was this beautiful wallpaper that we've got above the headboard. You've probably seen by now, as we've done most of the project, uh, that this client loves wallpapers. They were obsessed with our Fromental collection and wanted to use as much of it as possible, which I was obviously very happy about. This is the first time I've used this design. I designed it back in 2020, and you can see it's inspired by pussy willow branches. When I was designing it, I wanted something sort of much more minimalist than the other designs we've done. We took inspiration for all of the colour scheme from the wallpaper. So you can see we've taken the metal elements from the branches, which are a kind of bronze colour, and we brought those down onto the lamps, the handles, all the accessories, even the trims on the cushions. And then the lighter colour of the actual buds, we've taken onto the headboard, the lampshades. So you're still getting lots of nice contrast. It's really important when you're designing a neutral bedroom that you think about patterns and textures so that it doesn't become boring. With the artwork pieces that I sourced for this room, I wanted to be really careful not to pick pieces of art that were gonna um, dominate or compete with the wallpaper. You've gotta be really careful when you're using chinoiserie that the pieces are quite tonal. So I used these two monochrome pieces on either side of the headboard. And what I think works about these is not only the colour palette, which is very tonal with the wallpaper, but also you can see it's got some um, much more empty spaces on the artwork. It's got the very large mount and the simple frame. So it's a much more sort of quiet piece of art and allows the wallpaper to take centre stage. And then on this wall, what I like about this and why I think it's so effective is A, it's got the glass, so it reflects all the light that you see through the window opposite but the fabric that drapes on the piece of art feels so restful. It almost looks like the desert and the sand and the local landscape. And then it ties in really nicely with the fabric on the bed. You can see the way we've styled the bed with all these drapes, it kind of mimics the artwork and it's a real sort of nerdy detail, but something that really makes me happy. So this bedspread deserves an extra special mention because it is the latest product that we are launching. This house has kind of had the first opportunity to use a lot of our new products that we've designed. We've been developing it with Coes and the reason I wanted it is because I'm really over those big heavy bedspreads that you take off the bed, they take too much room to store. I love much lighter ones. 
What's great about this is that it's a lightweight bedspread and it just looks much more inviting, much more contemporary than having the bed completely covered with a bedspread with loads of cushions. I'm kind of over that look now. Moving on to these cushions, now this fabric is so special, you can't ever get this fabric again. This is a Hermes fabric and when I found out that Hermes was stopping making fabrics, I bought up all the fabrics that I loved and I held onto them waiting for a special client and a special project. And when I was designing this room, I knew this was the project that deserved this fabric. So what I love about this is that it works with the wallpaper. It's, you know, their typical Hermes chain. It's so special. The client also loves Hermes, so we bonded over that. And as always, I've done two patterns or two different colors on the outside and then a contrasting color on the middle. I like to mix up and not have them all matching on a bed. I mentioned earlier the importance of using texture when you're designing a neutral space, and this chair is a great example of that. Here we've used a really heavily textured boucle fabric, and the dense texture on this stops it from feeling too monotone and too boring. And the other thing to know about neutrals is when you're picking a neutral, don't use all the mid-tones. Make sure that you're getting a lot of contrast. So we've got the very dark taupes going down to the alabaster creams. Mixing those makes it much more interesting than if everything's a similar tone. Tucked away in the corner behind this sliding door, we have the ensuite bathroom. Again, no luxury has been spared in here. We have floor to ceiling marble, even all the skirtings are marble. And we chose quite a heavily veined marble in here because we knew we wanted to keep it neutral. That makes sure that it adds lots of interest. And then we've warmed up the room by using the Gessie fixtures, but this time in a rose gold finish. Again, I like to mix up the metal finishes throughout the house. I didn't want to have antique brass everywhere. I always love to do a vanity unit with lots of work surface where possible so that you can dress it. For the vanity unit, we've gone for a very simple panel design that kind of replicates the paneling that we have throughout the house. Again, just making sure that the marble's centre stage, I didn't want anything too fussy. And then behind here, we have the huge shower enclosure. One of the things I really like to do is make sure that the metal on the shower enclosure matches the taps. It's one of my pet peeves when it doesn't match. So we had this all refinished locally to perfectly tone with the Gessie Rose Gold. Down the corridor from the external majlis and the guest bedroom, we are led to this washroom. It's probably the most opulent washroom we've ever designed and I've ever seen. Center stage and focal point is this amazing vanity unit that has four basins. And the reason we've designed it like this is because it's intended that multiple guests can wash their hands when they're being entertained at the Majolus all at the same time. I absolutely love the swan neck taps that we sourced from Gessy. I think they look so elegant. And then in the central space, we've dressed that with a faux orchid that leads your eye up to the amazing statement lighting. For the stone selection, we've kept it all tonal with the flooring in this area, so it's all about the form. And then we took inspiration from the reader design on the taps and took that down onto the base. I really love fluting and fluting on a marble is particularly beautiful. There's so much detail in here, even the water jet floor, which just feels especially opulent. Then onto the walls, we've done a mixture of wall coverings with art. These are from our collection with Fremental. We sourced these because the Feng Shui um, experts wanted us to have an earth element. So having the magnolia branches and the butterflies satisfied that requirement. And then we've kept the wall covering itself very neutral. So all the focus goes back onto the central pedestal and the lighting. The architects designed this room to be round, which I really love because it mimics the central pedestal. And then we further emphasize the shape of the room by putting the mirror in each of these four sections of the wall. And then we've mounted these beautiful light fixtures on top. These are a combination of selenite and antique brass, and we sourced those from France. 
Off to the side of the washroom, we have this separate cubicle. Again, it's very ornate, very luxurious. It's clad wall to wall in marble. And one of my favorite features in here is the curved vanity unit that again is made out of marble. And then we've dressed the window with a Roman blind for privacy. We've now left the main house with the guest bedroom and I've walked across the garden past the pool to the gym complex. I say complex, it's not the largest building but it's this really cute mini version of the house that stands alone. And in here we have a complete wellness area, we've got a massage bed behind the screen and here we have a running machine, there's more equipment to follow, a little Pilates piece of equipment and we're going to have some free weights. This is a very luxurious gym and the client was very much inspired by my own personal gym at home. She didn't want to have normal materials that you'd use in a gym like rubber matting. Um, so we use the same timber floor that we've used in some areas of the house. It's got a really nice soft feel and it also lends itself to the massage area where you wouldn't want it to feel too sort of cold. When you're using timber floor in a gym, obviously you have to be mindful of if people are going to drop weights. So what we've done in this area, where we will have um, a rack of dumbbells and kettlebells, is we've done a very oversized rug. This is exactly the same one that I've got in my own gym. It's from Crucial Trading. And what that allows you to do is you've got a soft area, you can put a yoga mat or a rubber mat on top of this if you're working out, but it just protects the floor and gives you a bit more cushioning. Moving across to the massage area, this is probably my favourite part. I can just envisage the clients having a lovely massage and relaxing here. They sourced this bed locally and we wanted something that again felt elevated. We didn't want it to feel too clunky and machine-like. So I love how it's got the cream faux leather and the lovely oak base that tones beautifully with the floor. Behind me, we've used a sideboard that we sourced in the UK. Again, it's got rounded corners thinking about all those feng shui requirements. We dressed it with some beautiful vases, faux flowers, a tray from our Addison Ross collection, and a box where they can put their jewelry when they're taking that off for a massage. For the workout area, the client wanted to have a running machine, so we specified this one by Techno Gym. I love how it's got a very paired back minimalist design. And then on the walls here, we've mirrored inside the panels to enhance the feeling of space. And I've added a real fiddle fig tree in here. There's lots of natural light and it just softens the corner. This screen that divides the workout area and the massage area is probably my favorite piece in here. I love how it's got a really soft tonal color with the walls and the floor and this little antique brass detail here. And then with the curves at the top, it just feels really soft and easy on your eye. We did a chandelier in this gym because, you know, why not? I went for a very simple design though. I didn't want anything too ornate. So we opted for this plaster and bronze finish. It works really well with all the other finishes in here. And I also like the fact that it throws the light up onto the ceiling. You don't want any light coming directly down on you whilst you're having a massage. That concludes the end of this whole villa tour out here in the Gulf. I can't believe it's come to an end. It's been such a special project to work on. But before we go, let's head back over to the main house where you can meet some of the other members of the team that have worked on this project alongside me. It takes a whole village to create a special project like this. So let's head over.